Okay, check this out. Each human foot contains 72,000 nerve endings and 26 bones that help us stand upright and walk. It also has 250,000 sweat glands that can produce up to half a pint of sweat every day. P.U. Bones in the feet continue to develop and mature until we're 21 years old. But as we grow older, the circulation in our feet is not as good as it once was, so we may need some help keeping them cozy and warm. One of the easiest ways to take care of your feet is by using pepper. All pepper contains a component called capsaicin. When you eat something with this ingredient, it increases blood circulation in your body. So adding chili pepper to your favorite meal is a great natural way to warm your entire body, including your feet. This is also why it's better to stay away from spicy foods on a hot summer day. When capsaicin comes in contact with the skin, it causes the blood vessels to dilate. This improves blood flow and provides warmth. The heat gradually increases over time, but in some cases, this warming sensation can happen immediately. This life hack is especially useful during extreme cold. If you've ever tried a lot of things to keep your feet warm during winter, but none of them have helped, try this one out. Sprinkle chili pepper powder on your feet or into your socks and get it spread across the feet and toes. This simple action can help to improve the quality of your sleep. Be careful with the amount, though. If you use too much, it might get a little too hot. At first, half a teaspoon per foot should be enough. And then gradually increase the amount until you find what works best for you. Your feet will definitely thank you for looking after them. But there are a few downsides to covering them with chili powder. It'll probably turn your white socks pink and make your feet orange. And your feet will also absorb the smell. If you don't like the smell of chili, you might want to cover them with blended garlic mask instead. It'll warm your feet and help to heal wounds. And if by some chance a hairy monster comes by to eat your feet, the smell of garlic and chili powder might be enough to put them off. Milk and honey can be used in another homemade beauty routine for your feet. Put your feet in a bowl with warm water and add one glass of warm milk. Then add one to two tablespoons of honey and up to six drops of essential oil. Lemon, pine, or cypress would be perfect. After half an hour, your feet should feel fantastic and soft. If you have hardened skin on your feet, you might like this recipe. Take a bowl of warm water, add two tablespoons of white clay, two tablespoons of liquid soap, and a spoonful of ammonia. Leave your feet inside the bowl for about 20 minutes, and then moisturize them with cream. As a result, the skin will become smoother and more resistant to damage. Now, if you don't want to use so many ingredients, try an oatmeal bath. Just pour 1-2 to glasses of oats with an equal amount of boiled water and let it steam for about 20 minutes. Next, stir the flakes in a bowl of hot water and put your feet in for up to 20 minutes. Oatmeal should soften the skin and help repair dry skin for foot file treatment. Starch can do a similar thing, too, preventing cracks and making your feet softer. Take a bowl of warm water and add one large spoon of starch. Put your feet into the bowl for 20 minutes. This treatment is recommended before bedtime because it also helps your body to relax. Ah! The first shoes were invented approximately 40,000 years ago. The oldest known pair was found buried in a cave in Armenia. Despite how long we've been working to perfect them, though, we've yet to develop a perfect pair of shoes. To this day, people continue to get corns and calluses from time to time. Calluses are often formed on the soles of the feet because they're under the pressure of the whole body when you move. And it's not surprising. During a typical day, your feet bear the collective load of approximately two African elephants. And if you put on high heels, you increase this load by 75%. And if you actually see African elephants wearing high heels, then you've got a different kind of problem. Nowadays, high heels might be considered a feminine accessory, but initially, they were popularized by Persian males. Warriors wore them on the battlefield in order to look more masculine, and women adopted this high heel trend soon after. Calluses are nothing more than thickened areas of the skin that form due to friction or pressure. In most cases, they can be healed at home. But if you've been wearing uncomfortable shoes that have rubbed your feet all day, Turmeric can help relieve pain and speed up the healing process. To make a turmeric paste, take 1 tablespoon of turmeric powder and 1 or 1 1.5 tablespoons of honey. Make a thick paste and apply the paste to the callus. Leave it exposed to the air until the paste dries, then rinse it off. Apply this paste twice a day. Turmeric has healing and antibacterial properties that should heal a callus in just a few days. 
Masks and baths aren't the only spa treatment you can create at home. You can also massage your feet with items from your kitchen. Fill a plastic bottle with hot water and close the top. Put the bottle on the floor and roll it with your foot, pressing lightly until you feel your muscles begin to relax. You can also do the same thing with a tennis ball, a hard apple, or an onion. This exercise is a great way to relax your nervous system and prevent flat feet. If your feet are tired after walking, you can massage them with a chill tablespoon. Put ice in a spoon, wait till it's cold, and then slide the back of the spoon along the surface of your feet. While a regular pedicure might seem unnecessary and extra, it can actually bring some health benefits for both men and women. The foot massage improves circulation, while professional nail shaping and trimming prevents problems such as ingrown toenails. And, of course, it's always nice to look down at your toes and see that they are tidy and beautiful. I know I do. In many warm countries, nail salons use special aquariums with several hundred fish as part of the pedicure process. Fish known as Gerarufa don't have teeth, and its mouth is just perfect for clearing the dry skin off of human feet. They swim around like a tiny vacuum cleaner and clean things up. But in some areas, like the UK or some parts of the USA, this experience is banned because it's considered unethical. Also, fish aren't disinfected after each client, which increases the risk of spreading infections. Therefore, before purchasing this service, it'd be wise to ask the manager for a document confirming that their practice is legal. If you prefer to take care of your toenails at home, make sure to cut them straight across to avoid ingrown toenails. It also prevents nail irritation and inflammation. Growing your nails too long increases the risk of various nail problems, so try to cut them at least every 6 to 8 weeks. If you've ever wondered why your feet can be so ticklish, it's because they're filled with hundreds of thousands of nerves. The nerve. The tickle response can vary from person to person, but some people have feet that are naturally more ticklish than others. Scientists believe that this trait has genetic links. They also confirm that tickling feet can bring benefits to your health because it generates a sense of well-being and reduces anxiety. But not all people in the world enjoy treating their feet or even looking at them. Some live with a unique condition known as podophobia. The sight of feet invokes extreme revulsion, irrational fears, and even uncontrollable anger. People with podophobia can get upset by seeing the pictures of feet, conversations about this body part, and even reading about it. In some cases, podophobia can make people struggle with touching their own feet, putting on socks, and washing their legs. Scientists don't know the origin of this phobia, but professional therapy helps patients to reduce anxiety. As for me, I just try to keep my foot out of my mouth most of the time. Hey, don't look now, but when you make your bed, you also make a cozy home for tiny dust mites. Really? Your pillow, blanket, and sheets seem clean enough, but these little guys thrive inside your bed. They love dark spaces, just like your mattress. Bad news? You can't see them without a microscope, but that doesn't mean they're not hanging out in your bed. So, if you cover them up while making the bed in the morning, they're going to be pretty grateful. Now they have the perfect environment to thrive. One thing these tiny bugs are afraid of is sunlight. So, it's not hard to understand that covering them up is the same as protecting them. If there's sunlight and fresh air, they change location. So, if you never make your bed, you aren't messy. You're just health conscious. Most people feel tired twice a day, at 2 a.m. and 2 p.m. But since humans are the only mammals that can delay their sleep willingly, most of us never have an afternoon nap at 2 p.m. If you really want to doze off for a while, be careful. Make sure you do it no later than 5. Otherwise, you'll find it really difficult to fall asleep later, and you'll probably stay up all night. The best sleep you can get is at night, but if you can't help falling asleep during the day, make sure to set an alarm clock for not more than 20 minutes. Another way to overcome that sleepiness is to take a short walk. A glass of icy water can wake you up fast too. Drink it or splash it in your face. Works either way. Some people have tried to conquer sleep, to be productive and not miss out on anything. Leonardo da Vinci used the Uberman sleep cycle schedule. He would only sleep for 20 minutes at a time, but do it every 4 hours. He invented so many things and painted so much. It's like he had way more time than 24 hours a day. One of the drawbacks of this scheme is that it's pretty hard to concentrate on long-term projects. 
Another great mind, Nikola Tesla, wasn't really into sleeping, just like Da Vinci. He used the same Uberman sleep cycle and never slept more than a couple of hours a day. He claimed he once worked for 84 hours in a row. So, when you don't sleep the whole night, hmm, you're about to invent something amazing. Or not. It's true that you should definitely avoid blue light for at least two hours before you go to sleep. That means most electronic devices, like TVs, laptops, and smartphones. Blue light tricks your brain into thinking it's still day. That's why it doesn't let you sleep well. If you can't fall asleep without scrolling your feed, you might want to download an app that blocks blue light or check your settings. Most laptops let you do something similar. You can even keep this mode on all day. Your eyes will be so grateful. If you crave sweets before you go to bed, you're not alone. Mm -mm. It might feel like chocolate soothes you and calms you down, so it's easier to fall asleep. But watch out for caffeine. It's not just in your coffee. Even chocolate has a small amount of caffeine in it, just enough to disturb your sleep. By the way, there are lots of superfoods besides chocolate that can either boost your productivity or help you sleep. For example, most berries contain antioxidants that help increase motor skills and work wonders for your memory. The darker the berries are, the more antioxidant they contain. Blueberries are a great choice. The time when you eat matters a lot. It's better to avoid food for at least one hour before you go to sleep. Monster meals can be too heavy for your digestive system, especially if you're about to lie down for 8 hours straight. If you want to grab some food in the evening, make it light, like a healthy snack, milk, or cheese. Mm. By the way, eating breakfast for dinner is really helpful for those who want to fall asleep faster. Bananas, eggs, toast, it's all packed with proteins and carbs. All these things can help you relax and fall asleep. So, Brenner, that's a thing now, I guess. Whenever you have a hard time falling asleep, aromatherapy is here to help. Some essential oils are especially good for sleep, like lavender, peppermint, and rose petal. If you're into citrus, try mixing lemon and orange. You can add just a few drops onto a piece of paper or add them to your aroma lamp. Just remember, those oils are strong. If you tend to get negative thoughts at night and you just can't fall asleep, try practicing some creative writing before going to bed, or start a daily diary. It might help you get rid of some of those downer vibes. When you're calm, you get better sleep. One sheep, two sheep, ooh, this trick really works. If you focus on falling asleep, you're gonna fail. If you focus on not falling asleep, like counting sheep or something equally ridiculous, chances are you'll doze off after a couple of minutes. <laughs> you can also count to 4, 7, 8. This technique helps you relax your body by regulating your breathing. First you inhale and exhale fully. Hold it while you count to 4, then inhale. Keep the air in your lungs and count to 7. While you're exhaling, count to 8. Repeat that a few times. Your body will regulate oxygen and carbon dioxide, trigger the relaxation response, and you'll fall asleep really fast and stay that way all night. Body tension can stem from tense and stressful thoughts, and that can make it really hard to fall asleep. To relax, think about something that makes you happy or something you're grateful for before you go to sleep. When you're relaxed, you fall asleep way faster. When it's too hot, it can be really hard to get to sleep. Stick one foot out from under the covers and let it cool off. Once your body feels that cool relief, you'll fall asleep in no time. Another trick you can try is to cover yourself with a slightly wet sheet. But this one's only for serious heat, like you're on vacation at the beach and your AC bugs out. If you feel too cold whenever you sleep, try layering with two thin comforters. Air gets trapped in between the layers, keeping you warmer than if you had one huge comforter. The opposite works too. Even a really lightweight sheet can add a lot of heat. Bedroom temperature is really important. Yeah, no one wants to get a chill while they're sleeping. 70 degrees is comfortable for most people. If it's too hot, you might end up tossing and turning too much and not get into those deep stages of rest. If you don't want to crank the AC to full blast, try taking a hot shower right before bed. It'll make your bedroom seem much cooler than it really is, and your body temperature will drop just enough. You'll fall asleep as soon as your head touches the pillow. One famous athlete went even further. He created the perfect sleep training bedroom. 
He recreated a mountainous environment by decreasing the amount of oxygen in the air. That way, his body was forced to work harder and produce more red blood cells. He claims that it helped him increase his endurance and perform better. Now, if sleep is just not happening, try massaging your toes and the arch of your foot for a couple of minutes. It's another great way to relax. In case you can't bend down that far, rub your ears. Surprisingly, the effect is pretty much the same. Gently massage the earlobe, then all other parts of the ear. It has a lot of nerve endings, so if you massage it, it can help relax your head and neck muscles. Time for some pillow talk. Sometimes it's even nice to sleep without one. Make sure your pillow is neither too thick nor too thin. If you like sleeping on your front, you may want to put your pillow right under your stomach. Try it, see if it makes you feel more comfortable. The best pillowcases are made of silk. Your face literally glides on silk, so it won't be all wrinkled when you wake up. Hair doesn't rub against silk either, so you won't have to spend hours pulling all those knots out in the morning. Nighty night! You step out the front door and get in the car. No way around it. There's a chore to be done, and it's not going to be enjoyable. You need groceries. You only needed toilet paper and some oranges, but somehow, you left the store with four bags of groceries. It happens. Just gotta put them in the trunk. Oh wait, it's full! There's a bunch of old stuff in there that you were gonna donate. You're not gonna dump your groceries in the back seat either. They might tip over. Here's the solution. Grab yourself a couple of snap hooks. Take your headrest and bring it up just a bit. Now you have space to place the hooks on those metal bits. Now just open the hooks and hang up your bags. Perfect! Oh, you like that? Good, here's some more knowledge for you to make your life as a driver a bit easier. We've all felt those nasty hot sunny days. Days when you always wish you had a drink in your hand. Well, today is one of those days. At the store, you bought a Coke, the kind you need a bottle opener for. The only problem is, you don't have one. Don't fret, you see these metal things on the seatbelt? They keep you safe, but they're also the exact shape of a bottle opener. Easy. Still got some old DVD cases lying around? Dust one off and get ready to make a sweet car stereo cover. Here's what you do. Grab a pair of scissors and cut off the edges. The idea is to create a flat, almost paper-like cover. The rest is easy. You go down to your car with your new do-it-yourself cover, cut off any extra bits, and place it under the stereo system so it doesn't fall out. Then, all you need to do is close it. Keeps it nice and clean. Plus, no one will get any bad ideas. You're out for a drive, but you left your phone holder at home. Ugh, nuts. Maybe you need a little GPS. Maybe you need to make some calls or record your latest Watch Me Drive Around vlog. So, you need to improvise a little. Reach under the seat and pull out some elastic bands. You're obviously not using them for anything. None down there? Check the glove box. Bingo! Next, wrap one or two bands tightly around the air vent. Then shove your phone in the middle. If you do it right, you'll have a do-it-yourself phone holder for when you're in a pinch. If you do it wrong, well, hello modern art. If you've just got your driver's license, or even a new car, and you're not quite familiar with the feel of it yet, there's a simple trick you can use to get the hang of your new wheels. Take a plastic bottle and place it in front of your car. Then, just drive over the bottle a couple of times, forward and backwards. This will help you get a feel for exactly where the wheels are, and how big the front of your car is. Okay, so you feel like you've got a hidden artsy side, but you're afraid that you've got no talent. What you need is the perfect art partner, your car. Take a couple of tiny paint bottles and place them in a row right there on your driveway. Then prop up a blank canvas right in front of them. You can use a huge piece of cardboard, a stretched out bed sheet, or some nice blank paper. Now here's the fun part. Get back in the car, start the engine, and drive over them. They'll splash paint all over the canvas and create unique and abstract art. Congratulations, you're officially an artist. When you're driving cross country, your biggest enemy might be your eyelids. They keep drooping down. If this is you, next time you go on a road trip, pack an air mattress. Feeling a bit drowsy on the road? 
Pull over somewhere safe, set up your air mattress in the back seat, and take a power nap. You'll wake up feeling good as new, ready to hit the road again. You can even just leave the mattress back there, ready for when you want to rest your head again. If you're traveling with a buddy, they might feel sleepy during the long trip too. This one's a bit easier. Get your car one of those fluffy seat belt covers. Your co-pilot can just tilt their head to the side and take a nap. Let's just hope they don't snore. Your mirrors might be too small to show you exactly what you need to see on the road. Those blind spots can be annoying, and you can end up with a sore neck from all that twisting around every time you change lanes. With a new and improved 180-degree mirror, you won't have to keep doing your best owl impression. Picture this. You've now got four people in the car. Your buddy next to you, sleeping on that awesome seatbelt cover you installed, and two other friends bored out of their minds in the back seat, playing with their phones. Before the trip, because you're a good host, you charge up your tablet so that they can watch a movie or something. But who's going to want to hold the tablet up for two whole hours? Just use one of these ready-to-go tablet holders that you can hook onto the front seat. It's like one of those touchscreens that they have on the new airplanes. Hundreds of movies to choose from, private and personal. What a great host! And those backseat passengers deserve even more comfort. Whip out some suction cups and make some extra storage. Your friends didn't even know they needed it. They can hang up some cloth to block the sun. A bag of chips, a portable fan. It's perfect. Until you accidentally roll down their window. The trunk. It's more like a luggage volcano than a tidy closet. It's messy. So why not improvise a do-it-yourself pop-up divider system to keep things tidy? You can use wood or just some trusty cardboard boxes. One section for food, one for useless papers, one for luggage, and one for that road map you haven't used in 10 years. Am I forgetting something? If you're on a long drive, your back might start to hurt. And, oh man, you forgot to pack your air mattress. Just chuck a lumbar back support pillow under your seat and pull it out when you're feeling sore. Not all of us are great parkers, let's face it. You might have scraped your car a little now and then, when you weren't being too careful. Pick up a few of those awesome rubber chickens that squawk when you squeeze them. Warning, you will look ridiculous, but you'll never scratch your car up again. Okay, get them out before parking, and hook them to the front and back corners of your car. When you get too close to a post or wall, or someone else's car, the chickens will belt out their epic song. And if you keep going anyway, they'll act as a soft bumper to protect your paint job. You made it home. The trip was a success. And now your car is seriously dirty. There's a few spots that you just can't clean. That's okay. Grab yourself a little slime. Yeah, you heard that right. Slime. Smear it on those spots where the muck just won't come off. That gunk will stick to the other gunk. Now you just wipe it all off. Don't know what slime is? You're in for a fun evening on YouTube. Do you have a fluffy friend that usually rides around with you in the back? Sure, it keeps you company, but wow, does it shed. Look at all that fur it left you as a thank you present. Uh, thanks. You love your dog, but come on. Why can't they just shed in the backyard? Okay, dog rant over. Grab yourself a back seat cover aka a blanket, long enough to cover the seat and the backrest. So even if your canine buddy moves around, all that extra hair goes right on the cover. Just remember to give it its own laundry cycle. You don't want hair all over your clean clothes. You're running through a dark alley looking for that new cafe your friends are waiting at. You can hear all sorts of scary, mysterious sounds. Ouch! What was that? Some monster just jumped right into your head. You sprint for a few more seconds, finally reach your destination, and everyone starts laughing at you. You yell at them to call 911, but then you see in the mirror, there's a cat sitting on your head. In case of real emergencies, you can rely on your iPhone to help you out if you activate Emergency SOS. It will turn on a loud siren to let everyone around know you're in trouble or scare away the bad guys. 
It automatically calls the emergency services in your area to send help your way. And if you decide to turn that feature on, it can also send an automated text message to a contact you choose. To activate that emergency SOS, you have to hold down the lock button and one of your volume buttons together for 5 seconds. You can also enable activation by clicking the screen lock button five times in a row in Settings, Emergency SOS, Call with Side button. To use this feature to the fullest, you can assign your emergency contacts. Go to Health app, click on your profile picture, and select Medical ID in the menu that opens next. Tap Edit, scroll down to Emergency Contacts, and tap the Add button. Now you can select one or several people and specify their relationship to you. When you're ready, don't forget to tap Done to save all the changes. Now, in case of trouble, your iPhone will text your emergency contacts your current location and let them know you've activated the SOS. If you're moving, they'll be updated on your final destination. You can also fill in all the medical data in case you're unconscious and should need first responders help. If you have an Android, you can activate emergency mode by holding up the power key and tapping emergency mode when the power menu opens up. You can also quickly tap the power button three times in a row. You'll have to tap the box to agree to emergency mode terms and conditions, of course, and then tap turn on. If your Android phone doesn't have a power key, you'll have to swipe down on the screen to open quick settings and tap the power icon and emergency mode. The screen will go dark and apps will be limited to help you save battery. It'll let you use the flashlight, sound loud alarms, send your location, and of course, make emergency calls. You can call from the lock screen. Just swipe up and tap emergency call to dial the number. You'll see your registered emergency contacts at the top of the screen. You can assign up to four of such contacts in settings, about phone, emergency information. The exact location can differ from phone to phone. It also helps if you fill in all your medical information in this section. If you ever have to use the SOS feature, your phone will take pictures with your front and rear cameras and record ambient audio. This data will be sent to all of your emergency contacts together with your precise location and a message saying, I need help. If your Android doesn't have service or works without a SIM card, it'll still let you call 911, picking up the signal from another carrier. When you don't need emergency mode anymore, you can tap three vertical dots to open more options and choose to turn it off. If you want to know exactly how strong your signal is, turn off Wi-Fi and call this. It will launch the Field Test tool. On older iOS, it shows you a number like in the top left-hand corner of the screen. If you have a newer iOS, it opens up the main menu with device info. Tap LTE and then Serving Cell Mez. The RSRP0 and RSPR1 are your cellular signal strength in numbers. They're more accurate than bars and always negative. The closer the number is to minus 50, the better. Minus 130 is the worst you can have. On an Android, you can find it out in Settings, More Options, or More Settings. Open About Phone, move to Mobile Networks, then tap Signal Strength. If it's not there, try Network Type or SIM Status. Never turn your phone off in an emergency, even if you're low on battery. If you keep it on, it'll let the emergency services contact you and find you using GPS services. If you don't want to switch to emergency mode for some reason, but want to keep your battery alive for longer, turn down screen brightness and set your screen to turn off after the shortest possible time. Turn off vibration, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and data roaming, and don't run any apps except for emergency ones. Don't start shutting down background apps one by one, though. Doing it eats more battery than letting them run loose. If you went out with your friends or colleagues and have to go through an unsafe area, you can track everyone's location on WhatsApp using the Live Location feature. First, you need to give the app permission to see your location in Settings, Apps and Notifications, Advanced, App Permissions, Location, Turn On WhatsApp. Whew! It can differ phone to phone, but should work. Then open the chat and tap Attach. Choose Location and Share Live Location. Here, you can select how long to share it with the participants of an individual or a group chat. Tap Send. You can stop sharing it at any time. You can also share your location in real time or request the whereabouts of your loved ones via Google Trusted Contacts app. If you don't respond to their request for a while when they know you're in transit, it automatically sends them your location. 
Download offline maps when traveling or going to some new place in your own city. They can help you out in case you're in an unfamiliar area and have poor or no signal at all. Use a password instead of a 4-digit or 6-digit passcode on your phone. You can switch to it in Settings, Touch ID or Face ID in Passcode, Change Passcode. Enter your old passcode, then tip Passcode Options and Custom Alphanumeric Code. Make it a mix of uppercase, lowercase, numbers, and symbols. Choose a fingerprint over facial recognition. It's possible to fool your phone with a high-quality photo of you to unlock it. Fingerprints aren't that easy to recreate. If you're going through an unsafe area, you can choose to disable biometrics for a while. Go to Settings, Touch ID or Face ID in Passcode, and turn off Touch ID or Face ID. Once you're safe again, you can log your fingerprint or face back into the system. On an Android, you can enable lockdown mode. It lets you instantly disable fingerprint authentication and hides notifications on the lock screen to protect your data. You or someone else who gets hold of your phone will only be able to unlock it by entering the password or PIN. To activate lockdown mode, open Settings, scroll all the way to Security and Location, and there, tap Lock Screen Preferences. Choose to enable Show Lockdown option. Then, you'll just have to press and hold the power button to put your phone in that mode. To help your iPhone recognize you faster in any weather conditions, you can add an alternative appearance for Face ID. Put on your winter hat or glasses, cover your face with a scarf, and open settings, face ID, and passcode. Set up an alternative appearance. It works for iOS 12 and later versions. Stock up on emergency apps available for both iPhones and Androids. They can give you instructions on what to do before, during, and after a natural disaster and even claim your insurance later. Some do it in the form of trivia questions to help you remember. There's an earthquake app that tracks the phones of its users to measure the distance and define the locations where the natural disaster is the most severe. Hopefully not where you are. The first thing that can tell something about a person is the way they walk. Those who walk fast and confidently hold their head up. They're focused and great problem solvers. If they walk with their head held high, having shoulders back and chest forward, then they're sociable. These people like spending time with others and enjoy the appreciation. They're also easily bored and like the challenge. If a person walks with an average pace and looks relaxed, then they're, well, relaxed. They're calm and tend to focus more on others rather than on themselves. They're also easily influenced. Those who walk with a medium pace but in confident strides are very cooperative and good listeners. They're loyal and a bit dependent on others. Those who walk slowly and keep their head lowered are likely to be introverted and shy. If they cross their arms, then they're probably vulnerable and like to be alone. So here's a trick. If you want to appear confident when you walk in somewhere, especially if it's an important business meeting, always check your body language. To always remember making sure of that, you can use a doorway technique. Use something, for example, a doorway as an anchor. Whenever you walk through a doorway, teach yourself to check your body language. Pay attention if you're walking straight, if you're keeping your head up, or other minor details. Do it every time you walk through any doorway. Later, the doorway will become a natural trigger for you, and you'll automatically correct your posture every time you walk through it. Okay, back to the clues. Pay attention to the way the person is dressed. You probably don't wear something that's not your style or vibe, and neither do other people. People who dress casually are easygoing, value comfort, and prefer to be themselves, not feeling the need to impress anyone. People who wear clothes with colorful patterns are creative and like to express themselves through what they wear. Those who wear designer clothes displaying the logos like to show off and show their status. People who wear their working clothes are workaholics who value themselves mostly through their job and achievements at work. Those who have official style and wear formal clothes are sophisticated and assertive. People who wear sports clothes are confident. Those who wear neutral colors are closed and don't like to draw attention to themselves, preferring to stay in shape. Even the choice of shoes can tell you something. In one study, people were shown photos of people's boots, and they had to describe the personality of the person to whom the pair of footwear belonged to. Surprisingly, the descriptions were pretty accurate. 
So, people who wear comfortable shoes are agreeable. People whose shoes are new or just in perfect condition are clingy and anxious. Ankle boots lovers are pushy. If a person has a bag, pay attention to how they carry it. If it's in front of their body, kept close, then they're a cautious and shy person. Now, let's turn to the handshake. It's not just a social ritual, but also a way to get the first impression about the person. A dominant handshake is when the person flips their hand over yours with their palm facing down. This is a dominant person trying to show who's the boss here. They like to take control over others, don't like to take anyone's opinion into account, and might even be a bit pushy sometimes. A submissive handshake is the opposite position, where the person's palm is facing up and their hand is covered by yours. This means the person isn't confident, and you can easily dominate them if you wish. Another one is a floppy handshake, where the person doesn't really give your hand a shake. It's one-sided, and it appears like it's just you who give them one. This handshake means weakness and indifference. There's also a double-hand handshake. It's when a person uses both their hands, usually placing the second hand on the back of the other person's hand. This type says the person accepts the other person's dominance, but invites them for discussion. It's typical for honest and open people who like to talk things through and have a conversation. However, if the second hand is placed not on the back of the opponent's hand, but on top of it, it's a way of self-defense and reveals the lack of trust. Another way to use the second hand is to touch the opponent. So these people give you a handshake, but also touch your back, forearm, or anything else with their free hand. This displays that the person needs company and lacks communications in their life. Now, we're off to eye contact. While speaking to the person, pay attention to their eyes. People who keep eye contact are open. They're interested in what you're saying and are paying attention to you. Those who constantly break it are rather nervous and uncomfortable. Or they're just shy. Shy people can't keep eye contact for long because they consider it invasive. If the person blinks a lot, it means they're distressed. And if their eyes are squinted, they're suspicious of you and don't trust you much. Pay attention to how the person treats people who work in service, like restaurant and hotel staff, retail and food service. Service staff have to be nice to the customer, but the customer doesn't have to return the attitude. In this case, the customer is in the position of power. So pay attention how they behave when they have that power. Do they choose to be nice, or do they prefer to treat people poorly when they don't have the obligation to be good guys? Power reveals people's true personality. If a person appears to be nice with you, but they're rude with a waiter in a restaurant, they're not a person to be trusted. Overall, how polite the person is is also a good indicator of their identity. Yes, if a person knows and uses words like please and thank you, then they must be a good person who is considerate and empathetic and respects other people. And, well, if they're rude to others, especially to those who have a lower social status, then they're overprivileged and, well, simply rude. Interestingly, the way animals react to a person can also tell a lot about their personality. Animals don't judge anyone by their looks, their way of thinking, or education. So they're way harder to mess up than with people. Animals draw their opinions based on people's vibe, body language, and facial expressions, which are way harder to control. Some believe that animals just have some sixth sense, and they can smell if a person is good or not. So if animals like someone, then it must be a nice person. Pay attention to the person's reading preferences. People who enjoy classics are empathetic and like to get to know others profoundly. Fantasy books lovers are true daydreamers who like to escape reality and are sometimes out of this world. Historical fiction people are perfectionists who pay attention even to minor details. And horror readers are adventurous and always seeking some adrenaline. People who check their smartphones all the time are probably emotionally unstable. Checking the phone is a way for them to up their mood. People who argue all the time, even when there's no valid reason for that, are narcissistic and self-focused. However, if the person argues, but for a reason and carefully picks their arguments, it simply means that they like a good debate. If a person eats fast, it might mean they have a high level of anxiety, or they have theater tickets and are running late. Also, pay attention to where a person looks when they're drinking from a cup. Those who look inside the cup are idealistic and introspective people who constantly reflect on their feelings and emotions. People who look out of the cup are usually extroverted, carefree, and trusting. 
but they can be easily influenced. Some people close their eyes when they drink. This means they're either uncomfortable or just deep in their own thoughts. When people clink glasses, those whose glass is higher have a high self-esteem, and those who place their glasses lower think of themselves worse than they are. People who are highly intelligent tend to have a sloppy handwriting. So if you can't read a note from your colleague or a random person you just met, don't judge them too closely. You might have just made the acquaintance of a genius. Put oil-absorbent paper on a clean, smooth surface. Then squeeze your toothpaste evenly on the paper blob by blob. Sprinkle it with baking soda. And when the toothpaste pieces solidify, put them in a small portable box or bottle. When you need to brush your teeth in the wild, just take one blob, put it in your mouth, and use your toothbrush as usual. If your condiment collection takes up too much space in your picnic basket, use some straws to create many versions of your favorite spices. Cut one-third of a straw, pinch one edge with forceps, and melt it on fire to seal the edges together. Then, use a kitchen funnel to pour the spices into this mini bottle and seal the second edge using the same technique. Sign the name of the spice and place it in a small box. When your shoes get wet in the wild, find some stones of a suitable size. Put the stones in a pot with water and boil them. Place the heated stones carefully inside your shoes. You can use kitchen tongs or a ladle to carry the stones. The shoes will soon get dry. If you don't want to boil the stones, here's another way. Take a plastic bottle, pour hot water inside and wrap the bottle with toilet paper. Then place the bottle in your shoe and wait for 30 minutes. It should be enough to make them crispy and comfortable. If you're eating soup in the wild, you can cut an emergency spoon out of a plastic bottle. Cut out the shape of a spoon with a knife in the place where the walls of the bottle meet the bottom. And don't forget to add a comfortable handle. Garlic and onions can be easily peeled with a metal bottle cap. Speaking of metal caps, you can open a bottle with one of those using your wedding band, metal spoon, or another bottle. Went fishing but forgot your knife at home? Use a carrot to peel the fish. Cut the carrot at an angle and rub the fish scales with one half of the carrot. The scales will easily come off. Punch holes in a cork of a plastic bottle and screw it tight. Then cut off the top of the bottle and turn it upside down. Place a rolled napkin or toilet paper in the neck of the bottle. Then put some coal, grass, and stones and pour turbid water into this handmade filter. Later, you can boil this filtered water and drink it if you get thirsty in the wild. Melt a bar of soap and draw it up into a syringe. Squeeze the soap into an empty pill pack and seal the template with tinfoil. Use one of the tiny soaps to wash your hands anytime. To make your grilled patties juicier, press a groove in the middle of the patty and put ice on it. Wait for the ice to melt and fry as usual. You can make a camping washing machine using an ordinary bucket with a lid. Cut a small hole in the middle of the lid and insert a plunger handle into it. Pour the laundry detergent into the bucket. Put in clothes and water, close the lid, and rinse the clothes with a plunger until the stains are removed. If you can't pick out gum stuck on your clothes, put a piece of ice on it, and the gum will tear off easily. You can also put your clothes in a freezer for a while and then tear off the gum. Detergent bottles are usually too big to take on a camping trip. Take a sheet of thin paper and spread the detergent evenly on the paper. Cut the paper into small square pieces and put them in a waterproof box. When you need to wash the dishes, just put one piece on a wet sponge. While walking in the woods, collect tree branches, about the width of a finger. Bring the branches home, wash and cut them into equal pieces. Put them in a bowl and glue the sticks together in the shape of the bowl, using hot melted glue. Your stylish handmade fruit tray is ready. If the lid of the tin just wouldn't open that easily, try this life hack. Wrap the lid with adhesive tape, then gently pull it open. If your kettle is full of scale, pour in some water and put a piece of lemon inside. Boil the water, then wash the kettle, and the scale will be gone. In case you get hungry in the wild without a fishing rod, try another way to catch some fish. Take a large empty plastic bottle, cut off the top part, and turn it upside down. Tie the two sides of the bottle mouth with a rope. Crush some instant noodles and put them inside the bottle. Throw the bottle into the river. This trap will surely attract fish. Make matches that will never get blown out in windy weather. 
Wrap the matches in napkins and dip them in melted wax. Wait for them to dry and voila, you have matches that won't go out. You can use a basic razor to crumble chocolate into your ice cream or coffee. Take an even number of jars and paint them your favorite color. Glue them to the surface of a wooden chopping board from both sides and then put a rope on the side of the chopping board as the handle rope. Your brand new tableware storage box for outdoor camping is ready. Nitrogen in hair promotes nutrients. Put the hair you lose every day in a flower pot and your plants will grow stronger and healthier. Place several instant noodles in a baking dish. Add a thick layer of cheese. Sprinkle it with all the seasoning bags from the noodle packages. Then, pour ketchup and other toppings like pepperoni or mushrooms in the gaps between the noodles. Add some more cheese and bake your meal until the cheese melts. Super delicious noodles are ready. Instant noodles are also a great fire starter. Take clean disposable paper cups and use a needle to poke out decorative rows. Then, use a knife to cut a small cross at the bottom and put the cup on a lamp belt. Repeat this with other cups until your own unique lamp belt is ready. You can also paint the cups in your favorite color before placing them on the lamp belt. Egg packaging can be used to store sauces. Dip the root of the rose in honey, then insert the root in a potato and trim off the branches. Plant this potato in a pot. This is how you can grow your own roses in a pot. Brush your shoes with toothpaste and a toothbrush, and they will get as white as your teeth. Use a hula hoop and a bathroom curtain to organize a bathroom anywhere in the forest. Attach the curtain to a hula hoop with hooks and tie it to a tree with a string. You can also use this tip to build a temporary dressing room. If you don't want to take the entire package of tape on a hike, wrap the necessary amount around your lighter, and then just cut off a piece when you need it. If you need to move a heavy sofa, you can put banana peels under the legs of the sofa. Furniture will slide on the floor easily. After eating a meal from the lunchbox, a lot of oil stays on its surface. To make cleaning easier, squeeze some detergent into your lunchbox, put a piece of absorbent paper, add some water, cover the box and shake it back and forth, and then rinse it with water. The lunchbox will get clean immediately. If you urgently need slippers, but you have only two soda bottles on hand, squeeze them and stick your feet under the labels. Your stylish slippers are ready. You can use a jar to make a candlestick or a mini stove for cooking. Make one vertical cut in the jar and then make two horizontal cuts on the top and on the bottom. Open the two sides like doors and put a candle inside the jar. If you need to cook food, just put a bunch of small sticks inside the jar and light a fire. Then, put your pot on top of the jar, and don't forget to feed the fire with new sticks until the meal is ready. Put dry foliage under your sweater. It will help keep you warm. To make thicker matches for lighting a fire, wind five matches tightly in one bundle with a thread. Then, dip the matches in melted wax. Wait until the wax hardens and put the matches in a box. If the zipper on your backpack or tent doesn't slide well, and it's difficult for you to zip it, you can use wax. Take a candle and rub it along the entire length of the zipper. See you Saturday! You hang up and realize you have two days before the main family get-together of the year. Your shopping list is ready, so you head to the largest supermarket in town. You follow the list to the letter, grabbing everything you need as fast as possible. The cart is full of fruit, vegetables, dairy, meat, fish, bread, well done you! One hour later, you get back home and proudly hand in the shopping bags to your grandma. She takes out the items one by one and frowns more and more at each of them. Turns out the fish and meat you picked aren't fresh at all, and those bananas and greens won't make it till Saturday either. Grandma says she'll save the day. You make a good snack to not go shopping hungry. Now you won't buy the stuff you don't need. Then you get in the car together to do it all over again. Smart shopping means cruising the perimeter of the store where you can find all the fresh and healthy stuff. Fruits, vegetables, dairy, meat, and fish. They normally reserve the center aisles for junk food, so you decide to skip them altogether. Your first stop is the produce section. Grandma says you should spend the most time here. And it's a good thing you arrived before lunch. Most grocers get fresh produce when they just open, or later in the evening before they close. 
You reach out for packaged tomatoes, but Grand stops you. Prepackaged fruit and vegetables are usually more expensive. Plus, they don't let you check each item. A good ripe tomato can weigh double as much as an unripe one. It should have smooth and firm skin and smell like a tomato. No! Don't put that poor bruise thing into your cart. Bruises on produce are a perfect breeding ground for bacteria. Try to find firm cucumbers that have no blemishes or soft spots. The best ones are dark green. If you see yellow spots, it means the thing is overly ripe and will likely taste odd. The same goes for peppers. They must be of intense color with no stains. Now turn it upside down and count the bumps. Four bumps means fewer seeds and better taste. Two to three bumps mean bitter taste. The stem of a fresh pepper is always green, firm, and crispy. Take these potatoes with sprouts out of your cart right now. Go for the firm and smooth ones, without the wrinkled skin, soft dark spots, or cuts. Pick only green lettuce with no holes or brown edges. The brighter its shade of green, the better. Moving on to fruits and berries. Gran explains that a ripe watermelon will come with a dry brown stem. This one with a dark yellow must have been resting on the ground long enough to get sweet. The same's true for melons. The ones with a yellowish bark is sweeter, as it had received enough sunlight by the time they picked it. Check out the stem of the bunch before taking those bananas home. The stem must be green to light yellow and not turning brown. Only take single bananas if you want to eat them right away. They survive longer in clusters. Never judge a mango by its color. Instead, gently squeeze it. A ripe mango will give in a bit, and it will also have a fruity aroma at the stem end. Smaller fruit is normally sweeter, but that rule doesn't work for strawberries. Different sorts come in different sizes, so bigger ones can be yummy too. Their ripening ends once they've been picked up, so go for bright red berries with fresh green leaves. Those would look dry and wilt if they had picked the berries a long time ago. That lemon won't give you much juice. It's pale, which means it's an older one. This firm, unblemished one with smooth skin will be way better. It also feels heavier, and that's a good sign as well. You're shopping for a big event, but otherwise, you'd never buy too much produce at a time. If it's fresh and organic, it won't naturally last too long, and always opt for fruits and veggies that are in season. They'll be less expensive and of better quality. Next stop, honey. This one looks odd to you as it has those crystals at the bottom of the jar, but Grandma explains it's a sign of freshness. It's normal for honey to crystallize when the temperature drops. It's also a good sign it looks opaque. It means it's more natural and healthy and not pasteurized. You check the list and realize you still need some bread. You already know the best option is the whole grain kind. You pick it up and study the label. Made with whole grains won't do. This one that says whole wheat flour is good. The fewer ingredients, the better. If you can't pronounce the name of the additive, you don't want it in your bread. It shouldn't have artificial flavors, colors, or preservatives. You lightly press on the bread you just chose. Bingo! It goes back to its original shape, which means it's high quality. If you see your finger mark on it, it could have been previously frozen, or the baking process went wrong. You move towards the canned food section, and Grand jumps in your way. She's sure canned foods are bad for your health, as they contain a huge amount of sodium. You convince her to at least study the labels. You should always pick canned foods that don't have too much salt or sugar in them. The ones preserved in water or their own juice are the healthiest, as they have fewer artificial ingredients in them. You find some tuna packed in olive oil. The package is perfectly closed, so it's all good. You know you should never take a rusty can. It can be dangerous. Okay, looks like you've got everything you need, except for meat and dairy. You know you should always grab those last. They can spoil without a fridge if shopping gets too long. You make some room in your shopping cart to protect your fruit from raw meat juice, just in case. Red meat should be of dark color. Purple, red, and brown are all good. Pork should be the shade of light blushing pink. It should smell good. It can't be pungent in any way. If you see many fibers, it must be some tough meat with a strong flavor. Beef tenderloin won't have any grains because it's super tender. White flecks and streaks of fat throughout the muscle are another sign it's juicy and tender. If you aren't planning to cook meat straight away, pick the one with the latest best before a date. You can still eat it safely after that date, but it tastes better before it. Dirty marks within the packaging are a red flag. 
someone must have handled it with dirty hands. If the chicken you're about to buy has skin, it should be paler than the flesh, not yellow or light brown. The edges mustn't look dry. The cuts must be smooth and uniformly sized. If it's not butchered well, there might be small joints and bones in your lunch. Any chicken that has been in the container for more than two days should better stay on the shelf and not in your cart. Gran picks up a fish and stares it in the eye. She explains a good fish will have protruding ones with shiny black pupils. The skin of fresh fish should be silky, not sticky or dull. Squeeze the filet. If there's a trace of your finger mark on it, it's no good. The final stop of the day, dairy products. You should reach for the back of the shelf to find the ones with the most distant expiration date. The same rule works for frozen foods, packaged foods, and eggs. Stalkers locate the newer ones behind the older items. Grandma recommends choosing pasteurized milk. No raw products will land in your cart today. When milk goes through pasteurization, they heat it up to fight off disease-causing bacteria. It doesn't take away the nutritional value of the product, so no worries about that. When picking the best yogurt, pay attention to the label. The more words you see on it, the better. Three basic ingredients are enough to make it work. The rest should be preservatives and sugar you don't need. Live and active cultures is something you want to see on the ingredients list. Don't forget to get some cheese. Not this one, though. The soft kinds like ricotta, cream cheese, goat cheese, or shredded cheese shouldn't have any mold on them. It can penetrate inside easily. Some mold is fine on hard cheeses. You can carefully cut the area around it and still eat it. Yay! You're done with shopping. Time to go home and cook. Yep, moving objects through a door when it keeps closing is super annoying. So instead, tie a rubber band around the handle on each side of the door so that it crosses over the latch. The latch then won't be able to pop out, and the door won't lock shut. To check whether your bed sheets are fully dried, take a mirror and place it underneath. Leave it there for around 5 minutes, and if it steams up, it means the sheets are still damp. A damp bed can be a breeding ground for mold and other nasty fungi. You can paint the end of your keys with different colored nail polish so that you can easily identify which key is which. In order to pour the perfect amount of oil or salad dressing, poke holes in the foil seal rather than removing it completely. This prevents a big amount rushing out quickly. To prevent band-aids from slipping off your finger, cut a line on either side. This will create four smaller sticky strips rather than one large one, and it will be much easier to secure. If you enter a public restroom and see a red solo cup someone put under the seat, better choose another booth. It means there's no toilet paper in this one. The red cup is a frequent replacement for a toilet paper hub, which is also put under the seat for the same reason. Speaking of restrooms, almost any public toilet has a large gap between the floor and the door. The reason for such a zero-privacy thing is to actually minimize the level of privacy and comfort so that people won't stay there long and there'd be no lines. It's also to clean and safer if some emergency occurs. Forgot to put your drink in the fridge? Wrap a wet paper towel around it and put it in the freezer. In just 15 minutes, your drink will be ice cold. Instead of filling your purse or wallet with store loyalty cards, you can take a photo of them. Just take one snap of the barcode, as well as a picture of the front so you know which card it is. Then, when you visit the store, just scan the barcode on your phone to collect your points. If you're using your phone to watch something and are tired of propping it up and having it fall back down, try using your sunglasses. Simply place them upside down and use the parts that go around your ears to hold the phone in place. Now, if you don't have the correct size coin to put in your shopping cart next time you go to the supermarket, you can use your key instead. If you have a key with a rounded end, you can insert that where the coin would go and the cart should unlock. If you're struggling to get your taco shells to stay in place, use a muffin tray. Flip the tray upside down, spray it with oil, and place your tortillas in the gap. Cook them for around 10 minutes at 700 degrees Fahrenheit for the perfect crispy taco shell. You can use a water bottle to separate egg yolks. 
hold the bottle over the yolk and squeeze it to suck the yolk up. Drop it into a separate bowl and you're good to go. Next time you're struggling to clean your ceiling fan, use a pillowcase. Slide the pillowcase over each blade to wipe off the dust. This way, excess dust is caught inside the pillowcase and won't rain down on you. To properly clean your blender, fill it with soap and hot water. Switch it on for around 10 seconds and let the swirling water do the hard work. Then just rinse it off and it's clean. Put down a strip of masking tape before nailing into plaster walls. The tape should stop the plaster from flaking or spreading dust all over the floor. If your shoes smell bad, put a few dry tea bags into the shoe. The tea bags will absorb the smell. Try using toothpaste to remove small scratches on furniture. Rub a peanut size amount on the scratch in a circular motion until the scratch buffs out. Then wipe it with a damp cloth and voila! Drill a couple of small holes in the bottom of your trash can to stop the bag getting stuck when you pull it out. The holes stop the vacuum-like effect that keeps the bag pinned down. You can easily remove the sticky residue from jars using cooking oil. Soak a cotton pad in some oil, then rub it on the sticky area. Allow it to sit for a few minutes, then it should wipe away easily. Now, you can use hair conditioner to make that new wool sweater less itchy. Just soak it in lukewarm water with a couple of tablespoons of conditioner and leave it for 15 minutes. Then just dry it and your sweater will be much softer. An odor on your fingers can be removed with some minty toothpaste. Rub them together with toothpaste, then rinse them clean. It'll help get rid of the odor and act as a light scrub, too. Now, before you throw out those old sneakers, arm yourself with an old toothbrush and a little toothpaste. Work the paste into the dirty spots and leave it for at least 10 minutes. Wipe it off with a damp cloth and repeat if it didn't do it right the first time. Be careful with color toothpaste, it may leave stains. Washing your clothes on a low heat, or even better, a cold wash, will make them last twice as long. Drying them on the line, if possible, will also make the material last longer than if you used a dryer. Metal zippers are very durable, but they'll snag more than other kinds of zippers. Just gently rub a bar of soap over the teeth of both sides of the zipper. The residue will help lubricate it, making it easier to slide open and closed. When you can't squeeze any more toothpaste out of your tube, just cut the end off. This will allow you to get what's left inside onto your toothbrush in a pinch. If there's enough for more than one use, place it in a plastic bag for later. Freezing candles before use can make them burn a lot slower. This will cool the wax right down and extend its melting time. A pack of cotton pads has those strings on it so that we can hang it on some hook or holder. And no, there's no need to untighten and tighten the pack again. Look at the bottom of the pack. It has a perforated line. Tear along it, and now you're good to pull out a cotton pad. If you've ever tasted a Nintendo cartridge, you'll confirm that, yes, they taste revolting, leaving a sour, bitterish aftertaste in your mouth. They're covered with denatonium benzoate, one of the most disgusting flavors known. Actually, this taste is kind of a hidden function. It prevents people from swallowing those cartridges. Headrests in a car are about comfort, and detachable headrests are about safety. If you pull the headrest out of the seat, you'll see two bars, which are quite sturdy. If you ever get locked or trapped in a car, you can get out of there smashing the window with these bars. Rough edges on the dimes aren't just about design. The coins used to be made of precious metals to show their real value. People would shave off the edges, spending the shaven coins with the same value, and melt the edges to new coins. To avoid it, minters added that pattern so people could tell if someone cut that coin before. That black grate on a microwave isn't just some fancy decoration. It's called a Faraday shield, and it prevents the rays from escaping the microwave. It also speeds up the heating, so you could enjoy yesterday's leftovers faster. A triple handle on a jerry can is there to make it easier for two people to carry it and distribute the fuel evenly. Gas cans often have a second hole that actually needs to be uncapped, too, before you pour the gas. 
The air passage will prevent it from pouring out, so no more fuel waste. Ready to discover some life hacks that are low-key useful, but high-key strange and ridiculous? Well, let's go! You wake up feeling brave and dangerous. You're going to wear an all-white shirt on your morning walk to work whilst drinking your Americano. But the plan backfires as you spill the coffee all over yourself. So you've instantly just gone from feeling like a ferocious polar bear to a helpless white furry puppy. But no worries. All you need is a black marker. Make sure it's not permanent and a world map. Find a place that shows you a set of islands. Hey, why not use the Bahamas? Mm -hmm. Now, add some contouring using your marker. Write the word Bahamas outside of the stains. And voila! Those coffee stains on your shirt now represent one of the most famous sets of islands in the world. You've just transformed a fashion disaster into a funky, stylish masterpiece. Now, go get yourself another coffee. Have you ever looked up at the moon, convinced that there was a face looking back at you? Most of us have, which is weird given that the moon is nearly 250,000 miles away from Earth. This supposed face, of course, is just an illusion. It's shaped by the dark splotches of lunar maria. These are smooth plains formed by the lava of ancient volcanic eruptions. I want to show you a life act that will allow you to feel like this famous face of the moon. All you need is an empty roll of toilet paper and your phone. Oh, and that beautiful face of yours. Simply put your face near the hole of the toilet roll and your phone beneath the bottom hole. All that's left to do is snap a picture and take a peek. Next up, are you a snacker? I mean, you just can't stand going into business meetings or classrooms where you're not supposed to eat. I might have found a solution if you're someone who likes Jesus. All you need is a chapstick tube, <clears throat> an empty one. Simply fill up the empty tube with cheese, and just like that, you have a discreet cheese dispenser at your mercy. <laughs> now, it's estimated that over 65% of people use lip balm. Some use it daily, others carry it around with them just in case their lips get dry. Who's going to suspect you're actually munching on cheese if you pull a lip balm container out? On average, for those who manage to actually fall asleep on planes, 61% will experience a below-average sleep. A lot of people have trouble falling asleep there altogether. But it's not impossible if you can replicate a sound sleeping environment. I present to you a sleeping mask. Just grab a hair bobble, bring all of your long hair to the front, and tie it as normal. It's literally like having a set of curtains over your face, which is what we need since the absence of light will send a signal to our bodies that it's time to rest. Now, according to research, two out of every three Americans name popsicles among their favorite foods to eat during the summer. Who can blame them? It's delicious! The only problem? How quickly it melts! But I've got something that's going to help out all of us popsicle lovers. All you need is a popsicle of your choice and a cupcake wrapper? That's right! When you take your popsicle out of the freezer, it's in a solid state because the particles that conform to it are together. As the heat increases, which in 99% of cases is the moment it leaves the freezer, these particles begin to loosen and melt. With each drip from your popsicle comes a tear from your eye. Now it's time to wipe those tears away. All you have to do is pop the popsicle stick through the cupcake wrapper. The wrapper will then catch any of the drips that drop from your popsicle, or any tears of joy that drops from your face. Let them soak in the wrapper while you soak up the sun and enjoy your popsicle carefree. Now, one in every three Super Bowl parties have chips laid out for their guests. And there's a good chance you might serve some to your friends that are currently on their way over. But what flavor will they like? If you only have one kind of potato chip brand at your house, no problem. Let's spice this up. To give your friends a wide range to choose from, you're going to lay them out in a muffin tin. Just fill each hole with a different type of condiment. Your friends are going to think you're the best host ever. Research has revealed that salsa is often the most popular dipping sauce, followed by French onion and guacamole. So make sure you don't forget to lay these out on that muffin tin. 
Ever get home from a long day of work excited to have a steaming hot bath? There's just one problem. Your bathtub is missing its bath plug. Don't panic, I have a solution! Dip back into your party supplies and you'll be dipping into a nice hot bath in no time. You just need to get your hands on a balloon. But stop, don't fill it up with oxygen. Instead, simply fill it up with water and tie a knot on the balloon. Oh, and resist that urge to throw it at someone. Now, go put the water balloon in place of the bath plug. Make sure you fit it nicely and firm. You can check it by turning on the tap to see if the water begins to fill. If it does, it means it's time for you to finally enjoy that hot bath you wanted. Now, would you like to make it the best bath ever? By having a beverage of your choice floating beside you throughout? Let me show you how. Go back outside to your car. Actually, put your clothes back on first. I promise you'll be back inside for that bath soon. Grab your phone holder from inside the car. Run back to your bathroom and stick it against the wall by the bathtub. Position it in a way that will fit the glass containing your drink. Make sure the holder's secure, as I'm confident you don't want to be bathing in spilled Coca-Cola. Now that you've ensured this, I'll leave you to enjoy this much-delayed bath and move on to the next life hack. Speaking of beverages, those cans of soda you just bought get warm way too fast. Let me help you out. Quickly pop to a nearby store and buy some ice. Then just find an empty cardboard box and a plastic bag. Open up the box and then cover it with the plastic bag as if you're going to use it as a trash can. Then, get your ice and pour the necessary amount inside the box. All of a sudden, you have a fully functioning drink cooler at your disposal. Go grab those cans of soda and put them inside it. Check back in a few minutes to find them nice and cold. In the meantime, just enjoy the sun. Sometimes, as you're going for a walk, you'll encounter surfaces such as muddy trails and forests that have the potential to ruin your shoes. Even if they're walking shoes, you still want them to look good, right? Well, let me show you a trick to keep those sneakers of yours sparkling. What's more, all you need is a balloon. Blow the balloon up and keep the air hole clutched with your hand so as to keep it inflated. Put the balloon on the ground, keeping the air hole covered, and put your hand inside your shoe. You heard that right, hand, not foot. Then press down on the balloon with the shoe. This will cause the balloon to deflate, and once finished, it will be tightly wrapped around the bottom of your shoe. This will act as a perfect form of protection against any dirty surfaces you'll be walking over on your travels. Now just do the same with your other shoe, and away you go! Now when you get home, you'll probably be so excited to get inside, kick your feet up, and relax. This is why struggling through all the keys on your key ring upon arriving is so annoying and tiresome. Well, don't worry, I've got an easy and satisfying fix that will make this process much more instant moving forward. All you need is some nail polish. Well, a couple of different colors. Designate a specific color for each key and get painting. Then just let the paint dry off for a bit. When it's done drying, you have a new color-coded set of keys to your name. Convenient, isn't it? Here's how you can protect your bank card from potential fraudsters. Use a marker and cover the last four digits. You can also use a sticker that's easy to remove and place it over the security code. Have you had a house guest that didn't use a coaster? Get a hairdryer and hold it a couple of inches away from the stain. Blow it on medium heat for a couple of minutes to evaporate the watermark. If a faded ring remains, mix equal amounts of vinegar and olive oil in a bowl. Wipe it onto the marked area and rub it in until the stain disappears. Then wipe it off. Don't waste time scrubbing the burnt stains off the bottom of a pan. Instead, fill it with water and add three tablespoons of salt. Let it sit overnight as the salt dissolves the burnt marks. And in the morning, pour the water out of the pan. This way, it will be much easier to scrub all that grease off. Picture this. You're on vacation and your shirt has become all crinkled inside the luggage. You need it tonight, but the hotel doesn't have an iron. Don't panic. Hang the shirt up in the bathroom, and while you relax in a hot shower, the heat and moisture will unwrinkle your shirt. It won't be perfect, but it will get much better without any effort. The football is on, and it turns out you've run out of standard batteries. 
you can use a smaller battery instead that easily fits inside. Now take some aluminum foil and crunch it up. Fit it into the gap on the negative or flat end of the battery. All done! You can turn on the TV now. Once your flip-flops crack and the plug easily slips out of the hole, it's normally a sign that you need a new pair, but there's a way to extend their mileage. Push the plug back through the hole, then take a bread clip and attach it to the end. The clip will provide enough support for the plug to remain in place. You've received a package and the receipt is taped on. You've managed to detach it from the box, but how to separate the tape without ripping the paper? Hold both ends of the tape apart, and by pulling it slowly, the tape stretches and separates itself from the paper without tearing it apart. Ziploc bags are perfect to keep things dry, but it would be great if they were larger. Take two and turn one of them inside out. They can now connect and work as one large bag, big enough to protect a keyboard. There's no need to carry your keys in your hand when you go for a jog. Instead, put them inside your pocket, take a rubber band, then tie it around the pocket from the inside. This stops the keys from falling out. You've broken your key in the door. It's stuck. Great. Arranging for a locksmith could cost up to $100, but for a cheaper and quicker option, try using a hot glue stick. Heat the end with a lighter, and once it's warm enough to melt, push the glue into the keyhole. The melted glue will enter the available space covering part of the key. Once it cools, it compresses and gains a strong hold of the key's end. Now, just pull it out. If you need to siphon liquid through a hose and want to avoid using your mouth, put one end in the liquid and hold the other upwards with your thumb closing the top. Now shake up and down. This jiggle motion pushes liquid upwards, a little each time. And once it reaches the top, lower the exit point and let gravity do the rest. You've left your keys locked inside the car. It's an older model with a roll-down window. You could get the coat hanger and begin the long process of finding the lock, or use duct tape. Make about 20 two-foot-long strands. Stick them onto the window, allowing enough room for the tape to grab onto at the bottom. Then with a friend, take the ends of the tape, holding them together, and pull downwards. The force will allow the window to lower enough that you can unlock the door. While drilling long screws into hardwood, your old drill might not have enough power, leaving them only halfway in. Before the drill gives up, get a block of wax and scrape the edges of the screws with it. The wax works like a lubricant, melting as it gets warm and providing easy entry for the screw. You're out camping, but you didn't bring anything to light the barbecue. Take a small plastic bag that won't leak, fill it up with water and close it tight, making a round bubble. Hold it over where you want to catch the light from the sun. The bag of water will work like a magnifying glass, starting up the barbecue, just as long as it's a sunny day. Missing a corkscrew or a cork breaking halfway? By using a stove lighter, heat the top of the bottle. The heat slightly expands the glass, and this forces the cork out the top. You've super glued your fingers again. Take some salt and pour it on top of your stuck fingers. Put your fingers into the water and slowly rub. The mixture will dissolve the glue and release you in no time. While hanging up a painting, it can be impossible to find that stubborn nail. Place a fork upside down and insert it so the nail is in between the middle fork teeth. The fork has provided a long arm that's separated from the wall, making it easier to slip the string of the painting over the nail. Once it's perfectly balanced, simply remove the fork. You need to put a cake into a container, but taking it out again later by lifting it up from the inside might ruin the cake. Put the lid upside down and place the cake on the lid. The base of the container is now the lid, making it much easier to access slice by slice. Pour out water more efficiently from large jugs and bottles by swirling. This will make the liquid inside spin, creating a vortex. The vortex allows for the air to flow back into the bottle as the water pours out, much faster than the glugging alternative. There's an easier and less messy way to remove eggshells from a boiled egg. Once fully boiled, crack the shell on both ends by tapping them. On one end, pinch off the shell. Use the opened end to blow with your mouth. The force of air will push the flesh and expand the eggshell, forcing out the egg undamaged. When the hinges of your laptop break, repairing them can cost up to $300. A far cheaper fix is to buy a picture frame and tape it to the back of the screen. 
You've dropped a small piece of jewelry on the floor, seemingly impossible to find. Take a stocking and place it over the end of the vacuum hose. Give the area a good vacuum and check the end periodically. You will eventually find it sitting at the end. You've drilled a hole in the wall, but the drill hole is now too wide. Remove the screw and find an object that is slightly shorter and thinner. Pieces of plastic, small wires, paper clips, or even toothpicks are perfect. Place whichever item you find inside the hole. It's filled the gap enough so the screw will now re-enter securely. Taking the trash out can put you in a gross scenario of getting bin juice on you. A great way to avoid this is by placing old papers at the bottom of the bag. Now, not only does it absorb all the liquids from the food and other sources, but also helps prevent bad smells from forming within a bin. Nobody likes mosquitoes, and pesticides are pricey. A cheap alternative is to take a plastic bottle and cut the top part off from the bottom of the funnel. After removing it, turn it upside down and put it inside the bottle. Mix two cups of warm water with two tablespoons of sugar. The mosquitoes will be attracted to the formula inside and become trapped. Now just sit back and relax without getting bitten. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click